Hi everyone. Hello. My name is Nino. And my name is Lulu. And this is Thriving at Long and Relationships. first year in marriage and how she started praying for her husband and that was when I realized that okay there's actually a difference between praying for him and praying about him pray about. yeah she used to pray about him which was what I was also doing because, because yeah. many times I would complain about someone and pray I would tell God God can you see he's not doing this he's not doing that how can he be like this how can he be like that how can he not want to help me do this or help me wash the dishes or even just drive me and I would just be going on and on and on and then when I watched that message she was just like women stop praying about you because you are actually good and so that's my own story what's your own story? my own story is a story <laughs> <laughs> so actually my, my own story actually was birthed from a place of um, housing when, when I say frustration so usually I'm a very, I can be very critical because I like things to be a certain way. And when things are out of place, I get very antsy. You know, so I think I had been complaining about some certain things and maybe I didn't like that this young lady, you know, we used to when she when we were quarreling and how she responds. I wanted her to be a little bit more Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> more perceptive about about my emotions and it felt like I had to explain everything I was going through and I was like, well, why can't she just more just be more not just emotional but more emotional aware of the husband's food. Just get it instead of me explaining it and I was like, oh that I'm bad, that I'm bad, I don't want to keep doing this. And I and I remembered that I think I was praying in my uh, my normal early morning devotion and I think I looked through the um, library and I have seen her own book. Oh yeah because I uh, yeah so she bought the book by uh, Pastor Mildred which we'll show you guys shortly. And I was like, oh, Pastor Kingsley have one. Because that is really the ones that can pray. I was not sure also be able to pray. So I think he released his own year town. Yeah. I think it was actually this year he released it. Maybe last year or so. So I now went online and then I now Googled it and I found it and I bought it. And, um, so was I, that when you bought the book? I think it was when we went for one seminar. Where this where she yes. now spoke about. So she, she spoke about it at the seminar. So they came to Abuja. And they had a seminar in Abuja. What was it called? Together Forever. Together Forever. Yes, and she has spoken about it again. That ladies stop praying 
about and start praying for me. And then when she said, I was just like, yeah, ma'am, we know already. Exactly. But she had already said everything. But by that time, I don't think the frustration had had um, gotten to you know. So I think it was at that point where I was frustrated. I was like, ah, every time quarreling, I'm always quarreling, I'm always quarreling, I'm always quarreling. What can I do? Then it now dawned on me, and I saw your book, and then I now bought you know, and I now bought the book, and then you know, that's when everything now. Yeah. So that's my own story. Yeah. So to the book that we're talking about. Take your All right. So what was, what was your own title? My own is titled Kai Prayer jo- Journal. I need to read it now so I know so that I can now show them now. Yes. You say what's your book? So will I do, do it like this and then the how book? will I know what it stands? Do you not know the book title? <laughs> the book that you can read it. The Kai Prayer Journal. Pray the for you. It's Kai. Praying for your husband. You check it tonight. Let's check it. You check it after. Praying for your husband. And mine is called Praying for, for Your Wife. Praying for your wife. Very simple, very simple. <laughs> Praying for your wife. Yeah. Alright, and I think my own is bigger than our own because ah! you may have more things. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. It's a 31 day <laughs> journal. <laughs> it's for 31 <laughs> days. And every day, right, there's something. Yeah, I think it's more <laughs> It's not job. <laughs> and so what is what it is in it is that every day it's like a devotion already mm-hmm. it, and it's targeted at something. So for example, the first the day one of this is talking about when Boaz comes and what does it really mean? It's talking about your husband as a real woman. Yeah. Because it was written in scriptures about Boaz that he would sit at these um, city gates with the elders, you know. Yeah. And then of course we know that Boaz had a few red where um working or whatever. Yeah. So they should talk about how your husband can be a wealthy man and then there will not be some instructions there will be some prayers there you have to put your husband's name and then you confess those prayers with your husband and then there are some um, work work she has a workbook things and you now have worksheets. some worksheets yes. mm-hmm. so for example this one says five reasons why you chose your husband so i wrote out five reasons and then the next one says five things that define success and being influential for your husband i wrote it down so Every day I pray, I pray with all these things in mind when I'm when I'm praying about my husband as a rock So that's what so one of the No! I was handsome. Can now can now reason for this week. Yes. <laughs> and then my own book, for example, I mean, like she said, there are 31 different chapters. So well, um, number one, he talks about what do you call her. So he will not talk about so, so how short. God said it's not good for man to be alone and he made him a healthy yeah. So you now talk about the different things that um, the Bible is clear about what a woman is. Mm. And when you now get to your worksheet, you now say write out as many qualities as you want to see in mm. your wife. So obviously that actually helped me because there were some things based on the quarrels we we're having that I wanted yeah. to see in her. So, so instead of just complaining about it on this level, I had to rise to that level. <laughs> rain, rain those things over her head in the spiritual realm. So, yeah, so here are some of the things I wrote. Right? I think I'm not gracious. It's what I want to see. It's not that you're not ready. You can have it in one place. <laughs> so, one of, some of the things I wrote. I wrote loving, caring, and selfless. Not that you don't have it now. This humble, this humble, <laughs> I feel like it was an afterthought. Maybe something happened. I came around. Right. You know, I wrote humble. I came around. I came around. This humble needs to be there. Then there's godly and faithful. <laughs> It's financially buoyant and flourishing. If you watch that video, you know that my wife is spending. <laughs> so I put financially buoyant. So I need more money to spend. An excellent helper, <laughs> counselor, and lover. So when I'm confessing, so you see under it, you say, oh, these are the qualities you will call your wife in prayer day. Mm-hmm. And then the prayer points. Pray that your word will move your wife into the woman God's created. There are some scriptures too. Mm-hmm. And there are declarations. So let me just give you the declaration and then we'll move on to the next thing. So it says, I declare that you set your wife's name. So Let's just take it together. I declare that Olu Chukwu Tunde Oni is blessed. She is a virtuous woman and an excellent reference for younger women and wives. She is indeed my crown. She walks in divine health and is blessed with a sound mind and judgment. She flourishes financially. Man! That's why I do. <laughs> <laughs> she walks in the fullness of her calling with no hold back. She fulfills destiny and ultimately makes me proud Amen. in Jesus' name and makes God proud in Jesus' name. Amen. So, imagine raining this type of thing over your spouse's life and destiny every day is bound to come to pass. Because yeah. the things that are in the sin realm, 
and controlled by the things that are in your same room. So that is how we got our breakthrough in marriage. Yeah, one of our one of our breakthroughs in marriage, especially when it has to do with character. So yeah. what results can you say you've seen from before this? before that self? I mean I mean we already talked about how every word in this title means something. I'm going to actually talk about what the difference is between yeah. praying about okay. and grief. I mean we had said a bit about it, but yeah. I would say what it means to pray about and you say what it means to pray about. Okay. So praying about means that you are more focused on the wrongdoing or on the weaknesses that your um, partner has than on the on the strengths that they have. So even when you are praying for them or you are praying about them, you are praying from the lenses of the person's weakness. So for example, one thing I used to do was I would say, God, um, Nosa is not Nosa is is not as good as my as that as I want him to be, make him a tidy man. I know, I think you need to ask that. I think praying about is also more focused on self. On self, exactly. Yes. It's focused on self. Because it is, this is how I want this person to be. The person has to change to my own, to my own, um, um, yeah. um, say my own yeah. preferences. Yeah. Meanwhile, it can be that you, it just might be that you need to change your own perspective yeah. about who this person is or how this person is. So, praying about your partner is mostly you complaining about your it can go in a prayer format, but the yeah. crux of the matter and the heart of the matter is praying is actually it has to do with yourself. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. So that's praying about. about but praying. But praying for has your partner at the heart of your prayer. If you remember in Miriam in church, you pray for Nigeria. Pray for this person. When you are praying for somebody, at the center of that prayer is your love for that person or your desire to see that person get better. So it's no longer focused on on how what that person is doing makes you feel. It's just focused on you making sure that that person excels at what they need to do. So for example, a prayer like praying for is, oh, my wife is a wise woman. She'll be diligent in everything she does. Yeah. She's financially buoyant. Yeah. Everything she does, she's virtuous. She's valuable to her society. She's valuable to her, her family. The works of her hands are blessed. That way I'm praying for. So there's no resentment in my heart. It's because I love her that I'm praying for. And eventually, when all those things come to pass, they are going to make my own life better. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between praying about and, and praying, praying for. for. So that was how we're able to now differentiate. Because a lot of times, I actually used to, like she said, I was just... Because even my conversations with God can be very, very weird. If you actually I was like, I just be in the car. I was like, come on, God, now wow. This woman will give me where I'm like this. <laughs> I don't tire. <laughs> so that I'm speaking pigeon. Like that, her mouth. Her mouth, her mouth is sharp. I'm like, you, said, you, you heard what she said today, right? You heard, you heard. Should, should she be saying that type of thing? So it's like it's not because of marriage. It's like the book, I'm, like this. I've not read the book of lamentations. So, <laughs> I love me lamenting and lamenting and lamenting. And after lamenting, it will wear me down. I'm sure it's probably wearing God down. It's like he's just probably talking to this and see this guy. This guy is doing the wrong thing. You know? Yeah. But when I not we switch, yeah, we're doing the wrong thing. And, you know, and me, I used to emotionally black people and come out cry, thinking that my tears will somehow touch God. God will now go and knock him and say, Come on, will you behave well? Tears were all the rest. Anyway, so going to. I just suggest to you. Nah, so. Nah, so. Anyway, so what were the results we now began to see when we started praying for our spouse? I would say my own Okay, so. For me, aside the fact that he started doing most of the, well, actually, if I'm being honest, yes, he did change in some of the things that I wanted him to change in. But I realized that those ones that he didn't change, they didn't used to get to me as they used to, as they used to before. They stopped getting to me, so I would say that maybe he did not put his shoes in the wardrobe. This not me getting angry. Like, I can't put your shoes there. I will just carry it. I put it in the wardrobe, and it won't be a pain or a, or a problem for me, right? And then I now realize. Man. It's not really like as I don't put my shoes in. Babe, babe. It's not the shoes. Babe. Slippers. Even shoes and slippers. I'm a free thinker. Why must shoes be in the Why must be in the box? What's even that mean? What's a free Why must shoes be in the wardrobe or in the box? Because that's what they made the water for. I'm just saying, who is this person? I was only the person that, that created the shoe world. Isn't it the Bible that shoes must be? Did Abraham put his sandals or Jesus put his sandals in the wardrobe? God is the God of order. Okay, problem. God is the God of order. Just a disclaimer. Anyway, I shall realize that it didn't used to pay me as much as it used to. <laughs> and I realized that 
praying for him started making me started growing some sort of character in me so i was now more patient i was more forgiving i was more understanding yeah and there's a prayer that i, I learned from pastor me she said she would always pray that her husband deals with her with understanding i started praying about it and i started confessing and praying it for us and i realized that in as much as i was praying that for him i started dealing with him with understanding you know, some of the things I'll feel like, oh, how would you do that? I start, I start thinking, oh, maybe you did this because this and that, you know, and I started being more understanding to it. That makes sense. Actually, to piggyback on what she said. Don't piggyback on me. <laughs> do your own thing. <laughs> I realized that when I was, when I started praying for her, it also started affecting. There's something that prayer does to your heart. Mm. When you intercede for other people, it's like if you have a stone in your heart, it just begins to dissolve all that stone mm. and makes you a more caring person. So I actually realized that a lot of the things that I was praying um, for my wife, I also started having more tolerance for some of the things that mm. she used to do. So I don't always see she might notice that maybe before in the past, maybe she apologizes and I don't like it's fine. But now I actually would say things like, I forgive you. Yeah. And that would be the end of the matter. I and it was strange the first time I heard yeah. I was like, what do you forgive me? <laughs> because I never heard me say that. Because normally when she says, when I when she apologizes, I will still have something to say and still be like, okay, I've heard you, but however, this type of thing, blah 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 blah. I think it was I think it was like maybe three or four months ago. I think it was the first time. Even me, I was shocked when she when we had had a quarrel and I was so upset that she was like, you know what? I forgive you. I just miss my friend. Let's just just begin. And that's when I realized that I was like, yeah, you are changing. And normally you will hold on to this thing. Changing you know, so everything. prayer didn't just change her, it also changed me. And that's the reverse psychology behind it. You actually pray for somebody who is a wise God. Is actually changing you. And those are some of the results that we say. Some results we've seen faster than others, but it does not mean that the work is not already mm-hmm. started. I mean, when you plant a seed and you water it, the tree doesn't just spread up. Yep. You have to keep watching and watching and watching and two months, three months, six months, something. Some roots or sprouts might come out faster than others, but does not mean that there's nothing happening on that. So, yeah, so keep praying, keep praying. And even just thinking about the analogy you just used now, like a farmer that is going to water his seed in the ground, the process of him watering the seed in the ground, he's getting to know more about the seed. Yeah. So he knows that, oh, this type of seed will is within 10, 10 days is going to yeah. start coming out. Yeah. Or oh, I need this amount of water for this type of seed. So even in him, Watching this, he's yeah. learning. So even yeah. if you pray for me, you're also, you're learning. also learning more about the person. And in fact, a farmer that already knows that, let's say, a mango tree takes one year. When he goes, they want to go and water it. Because he has not seen anything, does not mean he's not going to go back. Exactly. So it's the same thing with prayer. Because you know that God has heard your prayer, do you understand? You have that mindset that this person is going to change. So you keep on putting the prayer into because you know that prayer works. Because you've already seen oh, yeah, the picture of what you want to see. So don't be discouraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is not just also praying for your spouse. Yeah, I was just I was gonna yeah. say that as, aside praying for your spouse, for people who are also single, this is the best time for you to start praying yeah. for the person you want to get married. So aside is writing your list of you must be all that can have some, you must earn ten thousand figures, you must do this. It's actually praying for the person's character. What do you want to see in the person? Start praying about it. Yeah. You might not have you might not have a boyfriend now, but you know eventually you will. So why not start doing the work and watching the seed so that when the seed comes. It's good enough for you. Yeah, like Billy Graham actually said it in one of his preachings that you shouldn't just pray um, for yourself, pray for your spouse. For example, you can be here, your spouse is two years away, and the mm-hmm. person is probably one, in one, on one beach in Costa Rica. I just find him prayer. Mm-hmm. The person says, the person will not just know one day when the person just wants to go to church, and then the person is converted. Mm-hmm. You know, there are different things. So, prayers are like investment that you sow into the mm-hmm. future and then yield your crops further down the line. So, if you are single, which um, categorize single, you know, you are either single or married. Yeah. Nothing like that. <laughs> you know, you all have something like engaged, but you are either single or married. So, if you are single without a partner, pray ahead. If you are single with your partner, you are engaged, you are in a relationship, you can also begin to pray for that person for the things that you want to see. So, it's not just praying for yeah. you know, your, your wife or your husband. And lastly, while we're, aside talking about praying for your partner, mm-hmm. there's also the place of praying with, with your, your partner, partner, which is yes. something that we also learn, yes, right? Yes, something yes. that we try to do every week is that 
we pray together. Pray together for each other. Pray for our marriage. Pray for our we pray for the projects that God has yeah. given to us. And yeah. we want to share this with Yeah, there's a revelation that came about it. I've forgotten where I I heard it. Um and Matthew 18. Matthew 18 what okay. Yes, Matthew 18, verse 19. And when I read it, it was just it was powerful. And we now started to practice it. It says it's Matthew 18, verses 19. It says, I tell you, the NLT version, it says, I also tell you this. If two of you agree on earth concerning anything you ask, my father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am among them. But it was so specific. He says, if two of you and to be a couple, you have to be two. Yeah. I agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my father and will do this for you. And we decided to start doing that every, we decided to pray for our marriage every, at least once every week. We decided to pray for, for example, if I had a project at work that I needed, um, I always praying for, would I agree? She also would have some things that we would agree about and we began to see the results. So all you subscribers that are out there, we pray for you. <laughs> and all of you are here now. Yeah. So it was something we agreed on. The amount of subscribers we want, the amount of views we want, yeah. the people who want to watch our videos, we took it into the place of prayer. And we agree. This is agree as touching anything on the face of this earth. And I mean, things also in most countries that says, can two work together? Exactly. Exactly. So you now even go to the place of prayer and agree. And I think one of the testimonies from that was. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a testimony or it just taught us. Yes, how, it taught us how, how powerful agreement, agreement is. is. So, so he yeah. had some. He had, um, something to do out of work and we're praying for a certain yeah I was praying for um, a certain amount amounts. of money so let's yes. say um I was going to pay it, let's say two thousand naira two thousand naira yes exactly. and both of us were agreeing that okay two thousand naira is going to come yeah and we're praying with that I was praying for him and was two thousand naira we're praying together about two thousand naira well, only did I hear this in my heart in my heart of hearts that's I did not believe that <laughs> 2000 naira will come so I was praying for one five in my heart exactly. but in my mouth like that scripture that says they pray to me with their mouth but their hearts heart, are not yeah. so we are agreeing and she will be shouting 2000 and then my faith will carry out do you really believe 2000 I mean I'll pray for one five <laughs> and what came and guess what came 1005 one <laughs> <laughs> and after, and after that actually let me tell you the truth I not have for that two thousand. I was so upset. <laughs> but that happened, yes, and it taught us a lesson. Mm -hmm. And then I think I was also doing something else later on. Yeah. And then I now stretched my faith and we stretched it together. And agreed on that. And a particular amount. figure. And what did God do? Even surpassed. It. Exactly. He gave us a man and put Jara on Jara top. On so top. really, he will. So it, yes. He was give us exceedingly. About that. Thing. So that's what agreement does. And you must not just be agreed in your mouth. In your heart. But also in your heart. So if both of you are praying and say, I want to marry. In December, the wife is saying December, the other is like, what is this? Okay. Next year, November, um, you guys are misaligned. Mm, yeah. If you want to jump out together, and the husband is saying, let's go to Morocco, and that's like, oh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> but let me, let me be submissive and listen to my husband. Um, that your Morocco plan might be, might be one kind. Yeah. You want, you want to want to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But truthfully, I'm sure that's yes. why that, that thing did not work out. Because, because I wasn't in agreement. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we're issues because I remember can I talk about that, but I know that this is not the plan. Yeah. So let that real be done. We'll share that story. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, yes, even for you who, who is single and, and you are in a relationship, can start praying with your partner now, yeah. regarding the life you guys want to see. Even yeah, for in a relationship, it's someone that you expect to get married to. Yeah, mm. yeah. Start yeah. praying with yeah. Yeah. one, one not your said boyfriend, one not said girlfriend. Yes. You try to get just you guys are planning for marriage. You guys can start praying together. Yeah. yeah. Which is something that we actually did before we got married. Yeah, we did. Together as well. So, yeah, so we're praying. Up. So, what you see today is the result of prayer and God's mercy. Those two things, no, no and, our, and also hard work. Hard work. But whether hard work has carried us to the mercy of God has taken us for us more. So, yes, yes, for hard work. So, it's work at not just prayer, but work. Yes, Side work at your, at your mind, mm -hmm. at yes, your yes. relationship. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's it. so, that is our topic today. So, now which leads us back to the topic that we spoke about yeah. praying yeah. for, not about yes. your spouse, which is your own. Exactly. Which means you are telling that <laughs> it's your own spouse. Don't go and be kind and be kind and have a sense. Pray for your own spouse. I'm not saying don't pray for that, but it's your own spouse, your own partner, your own person. 
pray for your spouse or your partner. Mm-hmm. And trust us. That you need to do as a couple. You cover yeah. each other in prayer. Yeah. It's not just there to cook food for the man as the wife and you give give the woman mm-hmm. money as the husband. And funny enough, mm-hmm. one thing I actually, God bless my parents, I learned about my parents and I know I've actually done most of this is that maybe 1, 2 a.m. in the night, I'll just be sleeping. I'll just feel something wet on my feet. I'll open my eye. I'll see my father or my mother with anointing. And guess what? I'm like, like, in our I'm like, why are you waking up at 2 a.m. with prayer? And I was like, people are annoying. But it was something I saw and it became a part of me. So actually, there are some nights where I'll just wake up and I'll start praying and I'll just come and lay hands on my wife and just speak. You know, whether I lay hands on her womb or her head and just speak to her. I think one day I used anointing and I put on your head. I was like, Jesus is like, you're turning into your father. But and they said they're anointing all the doors in the house. Yep. And I saw that in my parents. So yeah, prayer is actually very good in a Christian couple. You need it. You need it. You need it. Ah. It is needed. You need it so much. It it so much. So yeah, that's our story. You pray, so tell me if you mess up. Yeah. <laughs> so pray. <laughs> so you don't become a prey. There are so many things we can use. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that's that it for today. To don't forget to what? Like, share, subscribe. comment, subscribe. And please let us know if this blessed you. Yeah. Let us know any new revelations mm-hmm. you have gotten. Let us know if, how prayer, not even if, yeah. how prayer has helped your own marriage, your own mm-hmm. relationship, your own life. And yeah. please put some comments in our comment section. Until we see you next week. My name is Nino. And my name is Lulu. And this is Thriving at Love and, and Relationships. relationships.